unaware I'm bisexual. And I'm a big fan of representation in media. Especially in comics, because I've been into comics since I was three. But sometimes things are done very poorly. To the point where it's mocking bisexuality rather than representing it. As it comes across as tokenism and just a box being checked. Now, before we get into it, I want to talk about something uh, about myself, which is, although I can tell it's probably not why you came here, so if you want to skip to the comic book stuff, just go to the time uh, down below. Uh, are you still here? If so, great. Uh, I want to talk about how some stuff in my life has been affected by me being bisexual. I've had some family members who just outright ignore the fact that I'm bi and will attempt to specifically only discuss girls with me which is uh i mean it's okay I, like i like girls because i like girls and guys but it's very clear that you're attempting <laughs> to uh you know talk out the uh fact that i like guys too out of me <laughs> meanwhile i've had some family members who just say oh you're in a phase or you're questioning yourself which is also incorrect but the reason why um but people don't understand the whole thing about bisexuality is how sometimes it's very... You don't see it a lot in media. For example, I didn't understand what was going on when I, when I found out I was bi. I didn't realize being bisexual was actually a thing because I never saw any difference between guys and girls because I wasn't told anything about bisexuality. No one told me anything about it. <laughs> so how was I meant to know that I was bisexual? It took a while. Until I figured it out, and well, I knew some. It, I knew I liked both, but I didn't under, know that was a thing. And I'm happy to think because I feel more normal because of it, knowing that there are a lot of people who also like both, and it, it's perfectly normal to like both. So yeah, with that out of the way, I think it's time for us to just talk about the characters themselves. And I know this is kind of a and it, like I know some people might say this it wasn't important to the video itself, but I thought I should put like you know this out there, seeing the fact that I myself am bisexual, and I wanted to incorporate a part of myself in this actual in this video itself because I felt like if I didn't, it would come across as me attempting to just get views by posting a video with this word bisexual in it. So yeah, let's just get into it now. A lot of great bisexual characters in comics, and there's a lot of characters who are great, but their bisexuality is kind of lacking, or just straight up ignored, like we're about to talk about. And there's some characters who aren't so great that are bisexual in comics. This video is on DC Comics, not Marvel characters. The reason why I'm doing that specifically is because we'd be here all day, because Marvel and DC are of different representation, um, like, ideals. <laughs> Marvel is very forward, but DC sometimes can be a little bit um, playing on the safe side. <laughs> we'll be looking at the following characters. Wonder Woman, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, John Constantine, John Kent, Tim Drake, and Mikhail Thomas. Also, if a character you like and that I mentioned that I don't like, that that shouldn't harm the, your opinion of liking that character in any capacity. Because I'm certain there's characters that you hate that I like. For example, I like Kate Kane. I know a lot of people hate her. I also really, really like Supergirl, but I know a lot of people hate her too. I don't know why, but I know that the um, Supergirl haters exist. Same thing with Barry Allen haters. <laughs> I like Barry Allen and Ryan Choi. In fact, Ryan Choi is my favorite character, and I know a lot of people don't like him. But further ado, we'll get into it. Wonder Woman or Diana Prince is bisexual. Something you might not know, because ZC has practically decided to bury it. We got confirmation from a New 52 writer that Diana is in fact bisexual. And for the Golden Age comics, there's always a lot of lesbian and bondage undertones. Diana is, uh, has never actually been portrayed as bisexual in the main comic universe, despite the fact we have confirmation from multiple writers that she is. But in Earth-1 Wonder Woman, Diana is portrayed as having both interest in Artemis and Steve Trevor, and Red Sun and Superman is portrayed as a lesbian. Well, I'm not saying Diana needs to be presented in a way that's over the top, since she's bi all the time in like every panel. But I think we should at least get confirmation in the main comic verse itself that she is, rather than just have writers outside of the comics say she is in non-canon stories. Now to Poison Ivy, while she's always been presented as a woman who expresses a lot of sexuality, and never came across as she was interested in both men and women, that was until Harley and her started a relationship, 
which was constantly queer by back in the 90s. For censorship reasons, they couldn't officially date. Nowadays, they're actually known as DC's biggest same-sex couple, which is a big improvement from not being allowed to say they were dating. Both have had their own solo series, and their relationship is presented as being very fleshed out, as both characters are very fleshed out. Their characters are not just based on their relationship with one another. Instead, they are their own characters, which I think is the best way to present any couple, not just LGBTQ, but straight couples too, as a lot of times, how do I say this? A lot of times in relationships, not just in comics, but in all media, both characters kind of, you know, wash out when they started a relationship as they become only fixated on one another instead of focusing on each on themselves. That's not the case of Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Both characters come across as strong and independent, but yet again, when their relationship, it still works. And in my opinion, that is the best way to represent bisexuality in comics. Well, not the best way, but definitely one of the best ways to present it. It's not the only way, which I'll start getting into later on, too. Actually, next up, I'll be talking about it. But still on Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, both these characters are very, very, you know, competent. And I really enjoy both of these characters. And I hope to see the relationship further on in comics, even though they broke up currently. But still, I think they're probably going to get back together, seeing how fans kind of react to them being broken up. Constantine, similar to Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, also wasn't allowed to say they're bisexual because of censorship reasons. But since his first few appearances in Hellblazer, he references having ex-boyfriends. His character since then has lost and loved a lot of people of all different genders. Even King Shark and the DCMU, which I really want to know more about. But that's not what this video is about. Constantine, Constantine usually feels very cursed by how many people he loves, how he, for all people he cares about, usually die. Even though his most known relationship is with Satana, who seems to be invincible to this curse. For now... But yeah, she probably is. Seeing how popular she is, there's no way we're gonna kill her. And hopefully she is invincible too, because I don't want Satana to die. Constantine, in my opinion, is a great way to represent bisexuality. Similar to Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, but in different like a different format. John Constantine is more presented as bisexual in a more subtle fashion, which isn't a bad thing. Instead, I think Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn and John Constantine are all great characters. But the fact that they're all presented in different ways is fine. Bisexuality can be presented in multiple different ways. That can be great. Sometimes they cannot be so great. But John Constantine, I think, is presented very well. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy are also very presented in, are also presented very well, in my opinion. Miguel Thomas, one of the many, many, many starmen. It is ridiculous how many starmen there are. Miguel Thomas is one of them. His bisexuality is shown through him having a relationship with both men and women. Never explicitly said he's bi, but it's pretty clear. In my opinion, Miguel Ta Constantine and Poison Ivy's bisexuality is handled very well, even if they're portrayed all differently. Well, Wonder Woman, who's a great character, seems to be really high in the fact she's bi. My bet is why that's the case, is because DC is scared of backlash. As Wonder Woman is a part of the Trinity, well, Miguel Thomas, although a fan favorite character, he's not that well known. And while John Constantine and Poison Ivy are certainly the most popular bisexual characters at DC. Oh, and Harley Quinn, of course. Also, what I mean by that is I don't mean they're the most popular bisexual characters. I mean their bisexuality is most known at, D at DC, while Wonder Woman, although is by far and away more popular than all of them, her being bi isn't as known as Constantine, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn. One of the more recent characters who came out as bi is Tim Drake, but Tim's bisexuality is a really, really slow burn, as we're constantly just told bits and pieces about it, such as how he and Stephanie broke up. And Bernard's kind of bland, not a bad character, just very, very basic. But I think Tim's story seems intriguing with how he seems secretive over it, over what happened. I'm really interested in how all this turns out. Personally, I think Tim and Spoiler work better together, which, if they get back together, that in no capacity should erase Tim's bisexuality. So, his story definitely needs work, but it certainly isn't bad, even though I see a lot of people trashing it on the internet. But, they are also trashing Ms. Marvel, yet again, they never watched it, and I'm betting they didn't read it. <laughs> so, yeah. I think Tim's story has potential. Definitely... Definitely need some work. Definitely develop, definitely develop Bernard more. 
that I think there's actually something here that could come out of this. You know, I think Tim being bi doesn't hurt in any capacity hurt the character. It's not being presented in a way like, hey, he's bi, read it, or watch, not watch it. He's not, oh, he's on Titans, but that hasn't been brought up yet. But instead, I've recently read a Young Justice comic where Tim mentions how he's in a relationship with Bernard. And it's presented in a way that is, doesn't in any capacity, I think, take away from the story. But instead, it kind of enhances the fact that Tim is human. He has a lot of feelings. This comes from when Batman says that, not not the real Batman, a imaginary Batman says that Tim is just going through a phase. Which he is insulted by, obvious for obvious reasons. But it's in a way that is not done to, I think, over not overdone, in my opinion. I think it is handled very well how Tim reacts to this. And I think how it's presented in the story and how Tim feels kind of betrayed and it kind of gives him a idea that this isn't Batman, it really makes a lot of sense. And I think it kind of just shows the human side of um, Tim. Not saying that him being bi is what the first, like, oh, Tim is finally human. Tim has always been a very, you know, have a lot of humanity since... Like, you know, I really enjoy his thing with after his dad died. That sounds really mean. Because, <laughs> I'm like, I like him after his dad dies. I like him before his dad died, too. I like, I've always really liked Tim Drake. He's my, probably my favorite Robin, even though a lot of people call him the boring Robin. Personally, I think he's a great Robin. I left the worst for last, and that is John Kent. If you've been following my Dark Crisis reviews, you know how much John gets on my nerves. But this is about him being by was handled very, very poorly. John is a recent character. Now imagine instead of some crappy hyper-age storyline, we gotta see John grow up, start questioning sexuality, and come out to his parents. Not a way where it's the main focus, but a more personal storyline for him. But instead he cheats on Saturn Girl with Jay that is a very t- in a very toxic relationship, and yeah, it is handled extremely badly. I think there was... An actual, like, had a lot of potential of the idea that DC's biggest couple, Superman Lois Lane, having a queer son, could certainly be a very, very big thing. But it is handled so badly, and just so, it's rushed, it is hor- it's just, I'm sorry for those who really like the storyline, don't let my opinion in any capacity hurt the fact that you like the storyline, I just really, really, really dislike how this is handled. I also really dislike... I just, I'm just. i not saying John, as in any capacity, is always a bad character. But ever since he was hyper-age, he's just been getting on my nerves so much. It is ridiculous. I feel like John as a character has become... Like it has done a total 180 as a, as per, ever since he's been hyper age. He is no longer that whole, like, kiddish who's, like, all about hope and stuff and has a very good balance with Damian Wayne. Instead, he comes across as very not competent. For example, he literally kidnapped Metropolis in Future State, which, in my opinion, was just so random. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I'm ranting about John. I don't think... It's, this is what the video is about. But I just wanted to talk about it because, <laughs> you know, it bothered me. But John coming out as bisexual also really, really bothered me the way it was presented. Because I think John being bi had a lot of potential. But it was so... just It was done really, really badly. But that's my opinion on the on the case. Maybe you guys like it. That's just... I know a lot of people hate... Or a lot of people are trashing it saying, How dare Superman be bi? Because John currently is bisexual. Which I isn't my problem John being bi. It's just how it is handled. Is handled very badly. As yeah, so a lot of people are saying, oh, how dare Saran be bi and stuff like that on the internet. But uh, that's not the reason why I just like it. I just like it because it's just, it's just not well done. Overall, I think Tim's story works enough to have potential. It doesn't in any way come across as mocking, but it still comes across as being just a check mark. But even though that's true, I think it's a chance to grow out of that. Bernard needs more characterization, along with pro- maybe a proper conversation between Stephanie and Tim. Meanwhile, John Constantine, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, and McGill are great examples of bike characters done right, and let's not even talk about John. Um, John, that's John Kent, not John uh, Constantine. John Constantine is a great character. John Kent, on the other hand, um, yeah. I'm really sorry if I offended any John Kent fans. I 
I'm not a big fan of him, other than his character from Superman Lois. If you love John Kent, don't let my cynicism of the character, you know, hurt that opinion of yours. Because we all have different opinions of certain characters. Like I said earlier, I might dislike John Kent, but you might love him. Just, I wasn't, I loved, I used to like John Kent, and I just really disliked him after the whole Hyper Age and Future State stuff. That's just some honorable mentions who I didn't bring up in this video that I thought were at least worth a mention. Catwoman, Savant, Catman, Bluebird, and Knockout. They're all great characters in my opinion, but they're not as memorable as the others who I mentioned earlier. As uh, they weren't really either, for example, Savant and Bluebird and Catman, oh, and even Knockout, I say, aren't really that big, much of, aren't really big characters and weren't really presented as being, you know, big. They're really just falling under the same category as Miguel did. You know, Catwoman, she was only presented as Catwoman really in one storyline and it was handled well, in my opinion, but it wasn't big enough for me to, you know, cover. And that's it. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.